Turtle Squad, I'm Comedy Turtle, and you are watching Turtle Time. I said time and time again that the furry fandom is one of the most creative fandoms out there. From the costumes we wear, art we make, and even the written word. Which brings me to our topic of today. I'm going to be talking about an upcoming book called The Legend of of Aya. I think I got that right. Written by Matthew Calvis. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. <laughs> That's all right. You actually got Aya correctly. Um, the last name is Colvath. All right. And hello, everybody. So first of all, I want to thank you for agreeing to be part of this show. No, not a problem. My pleasure. So tell the audience a bit about yourself. Uh, well, it's <laughs> quite a broad question, but uh, I guess you'd say I'm a uh, parent of two, uh, self-learned writer, and uh, uh, work in the IT field, and uh, very much a, a geek and a nerd in quite a lot of uh, fandoms and stuff. <laughs> I think that describes pretty much every one of us. Uh, pretty much. Now, this is, as far as I can tell, your first published book. Have you done any other written works before? Yes, this is my first published work. Uh, I have done and dabbled in fan fiction. Uh, I got my start in Legend of Zelda. Mm -hmm. uh, did a little bit for Final Fantasy, but uh, I got swiftly replaced with Zootopia when that came out. And uh, once I completed a, a story and a half for that, I uh, decided it was finally time to uh, branch out and make my own IP. Fascinating. And yes, when Zootopia did come out, I imagine a lot of furry writers jumped on that bed and awakened real quick. Yeah, it was a flood, if you will. I actually was a little late to the train on that one, but uh, uh, I feel like my stories are different enough to be at least set apart. What was your handle when you wrote those stories? Uh, my handle, and the one I still go by, at least in online presences, is uh, Dark Flame Wolf. Which is actually the handle I found him on, under on Fur Affinity. So, tell us a bit about this world in your book. Well, um, I basically started with uh, kind of like uh, Zootopia, where it was kind of like our world, but uh, more advanced. Mm -hmm. uh, I decided to use that as a base and then continue to add more on top of it. Um, like, for example, there is uh, cyberpunk elements to it, uh, flying cars, uh, you know, certain gadgetry and technology that is a little bit sci-fi, but not within, uh, within the realm of, you know, reason oh, here. And uh, it's basically furries in a technological setting. Um, it gets more unique and different as the series progresses, but that's how it starts. Yes. All right, so pretty much take Zootopia and advance it a couple hundred years. Uh, about a hundred years, yes. <laughs> then again, they've been bragging about having flying cars since the 1980s. Oh, this is true. This is true. So, who knows? It might actually happen in the next ten years. Well, they at least uh, got some hoverboards figured out. After how long after Back to the Future? This. <laughs> uh, progress takes time, and sometimes it doesn't take any time at all. It really just depends on the breakthroughs. Yes. So, tell us a bit about the main character, without giving away any of the secrets. Well, uh, let's put it this way. I will tell, explain about the main character in terms of how I uh, created her. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the tail maw, which is, not a, which is an uncommon trait in most furry characters or sonas, mm -hmm. it was very unique and had a lot of drama potential in it. Um, I mean, a lot of furries who use tail maws typically use it for the vor option and, you know, use it for that type of uh, mm -hmm. interest, I should say. Um, but I thought, okay, story-wise, what if you were born with this, with this uh, tail? What would it be like growing up with this tail? Would you become friends with this tail? Would this be like, like a, a brother or a sister sort of relationship bond? Um, how would... This tale, having eating, eaten someone, how would that impact your family, your social life, your yeah. legal standing? You know, like all these questions that arose from having a tale like this uh, was just basically the genesis of this character. And I kind of expanded out from there. Um, and these questions that I asked uh, kind of drove me to 
uh, make her a teenager um, because I felt like this would be the pivotal part in her life where this sort of feature on her would give her the most uh, dramatic impact to her life. Yes, and a lot of teenagers are in the flux of finding out who they are anyway. Yes, so it seemed to fit. That does lead me into a question. Do they ever share a stomach? Where would the food that the tail maw eat go in the body? Is it an extra dimensional pocket like Kirby? Or do they share the well, crust of Jack? It actually, uh, I don't, there's nothing I can spoil about the story. Um, this actually gets explained later in book two how it really happens. But what it basically is, is Aya eats something, mm -hmm. digests it within the tail, and then whatever is digested gets funneled into Taylor's stomach. And so in, a, in that way, they kind of share a stomach. Um, then, of course, you get into things like overeating and stuff. Like, she eats and Aya eats, and now we got a problem. You know, these sorts of issues that come up. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I go into it a little bit in book one, and then I explain it in more medical terminology in book two. So... Yes, I see, I see. But that's... Yeah, they share. Yes, and as far as I can tell... Well, from my personal research, tail moths do have a minor brain of their own, more animalistic than their host. It's kind of like how giraffe rig from Pokemon works. The little ball on the end of its tail is actually intelligent in its own right. Uh, uh, so Aya is actually very smart, is very intelligent, can think on her own, and actually can understand speech. Um, however, she can't vocalize. She doesn't have vocal cords or anything like that. Um, but, uh, she can understand things that are happening around her with touch, via sound, the waves of sound that hit her. And over, you know, years and years of this, she has learned to interpret speech from sound waves. Um, and she's not as animalistic as you think. In fact, when I was building the lore for Taylor and her character and her tail moth, Mm -hmm. um, I literally did not look anywhere else. I did not research tail moths on the internet. I basically, like, I'm, for my world, I'm going to create my own lore. I'm going to be like, this is how tail maw works for Taylor, for this world, for my story. Mm -hmm. It may overlap with what you've already read out there on the internet, but this is something I just decided to just work on my own with, you know? And yeah, create. yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be fair... There's not actually a whole lot of lore out there for tail moths by themselves. Mm -hmm. So you're right; it's very um, rare. <laughs> you can have a character with a tail moth and come up with your own backstory and reasoning for it. Anything yeah, works. It's really. Go ahead. Yeah, it's really all over the map where <laughs> the, the the lore behind tail moths, because nobody can really agree on one thing because there isn't really a firm owner of you know tail moths, as say you could say like circles there's a there's an owner of circles and he has his own lore that he's put out there that people can follow or deviate from where with tail moths they're just there and nobody's really come up with something firm for the whole community right pretty much tail moths came out of nowhere and they're staying out of nowhere <laughs> no one can agree That's... on where they came from they just showed yes. up one day so i made up my own reasons where did the names taylor and aya came from um, well, <laughs> believe it or not, when I first created her in 2017, she didn't have a name. I wasn't even planning to give her tail a name, actually, at the time, because I wasn't even thinking about that. Mm -hmm. However, um, I knew I needed to give her a name at some point, and I was just going over, you know, Marie, Rosie, you know, just all these names, and just nothing was sticking. Like, I, I couldn't figure out a good name for her. And then I went to bed one night, and I saw her in the dream, and she just, like, came up to me, she's like, my name's Taylor Renee. And then I woke up, and I was like, that's it. That fits. That is her name. And um, the question started coming to me after I named Taylor, uh, you know, what's the tail's name? Does the tail have a name? And that's what got me, you know, my friends got me thinking about what the tail, what the tail could have a name and have sentience and everything, because I was still formulating all the dynamics of this character and her tail, and if it was smart or not, intelligent, things like that, and I came to the realization, it needs a name too. And like before, <laughs> Taylor came to me in another dream, and it's like, my tail's name is Aya. And 
I let my friends know on my server, and one of them jokingly said, I think I know why it's named Aya. And I'm like, why is that? Because when something goes wrong and, you know, you know, like in, in, in Japan and like, you know, like let's say a little kid is, is, is messing up the house and everything, the adult goes, Aya! Oh, like Uncle from Jackie Chan Adventure. I know. And I'm just like, you know, I could totally hear her doing that to her tail when her tail does something, you know, mischievous. And uh, uh, that's that's how the names came about. At the, uh, did you do any research after that fact where I uh, was actually a real name? Um, I did look up to see if I was a real name, and the closest I could find was Anya. Which is one letter off, but there wasn't didn't seem to be any other names spelled like hers. Have you thought of something where it seemed like it was an Arabic name? Um. Uh, well, then that's more than I found for sure. <laughs> it's just a cool sounding name. Hey, who is the target audience of your book, and why do you think they will like your book? Well, I'm gonna say up front, adults. Um, when I first planned this back in 2017, when Taylor was first created. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was originally thinking of making this series for young adults um, because she's a teenager. She goes through, you know, similar stuff you know, as teenagers growing into her own. But then as I was writing the story and the, uh, the themes that were going to go through it, the villains, the, the events that were going to happen, and of course just the mere fact of the tail mall eating people and stuff like that and how, the, the trauma that comes after it, just everything combined is just like, you know what? This is a little too dark. This is a little too much for adults. It's going straight to adults. And as such, I put it under dark fantasy, which ironically enough is under the greater subheading of horror. <laughs> Go figure that. So if you're a younger reader and interested in picking up this book, pick it up at your own peril. We are not responsible yes. for your nightmares. Yes, this, yeah, I am not responsible for young folk picking up this book. Um, uh, this is geared specifically for an adult audience, correct? You already touched upon it a little bit earlier, but how many more books can we expect in the series? Six books total. So after this first, five more I have uh, planned. Uh, book two <laughs> is done and at the editor. Book three I am currently writing. Um, it was originally going to be a trilogy until I realized midway through book one, I have way too much to tell and I cannot shove everything into three books sufficiently. So I expanded it out to six books and capped it there. That's right. We've seen it time and time again in movies where they took a book with a lore-rich depth and just tried to cram everything into a single movie. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the Aragon movie, for example. Yes, that, that movie was uh, less than uh, stellar in regards to the book. Hopefully your book series will also be as fantastic as well. I, I, I surely hope so. I, uh, that's, that's one of my hopes uh, in releasing this book. Now that you have released this book, what's next for you? Well, <laughs> as I uh, said earlier, I'm finishing up book three and moving on to book four. Uh, I want to have a little bit of a backlog of manuscripts complete so that I don't feel like I'm rushing um, to get each book out year by year. Uh, my goal is to try and get a book out every year and hopefully finish the series in 2026. But, uh, you know, things happen, real life happens, but that is the game plan going forward, is to try and do a book a year. Um, so what happens after that? I do have a, a couple ideas for a follow-on series, but uh, right now it's a little too early to start to uh, thinking about that. Yes, alleys in depth. Yes, I yeah, understand that. In depth. Well, good news is that I actually have a main character and a premise already set up for a follow-on series. That's already done and complete. I just need to complete Taylor's story first before I invest any more time in uh, any future books. Yes, 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 yes. Do you have anything you would like to say to the audience? Well, I hope you enjoy the book. Um, I am super excited and uh, geeking out over the fact that I'm able to finally reveal this character and who she is and what she's all about to everybody. And I uh, hope you fall in love with her as much as I have uh, writing her. Um, I feel like she's a very special character. Um, she actually usurped <laughs> my own persona in a story, actually. Um, I, I had another 
uh, persona. Her name was Marana, and she eventually ended up becoming the mother of of Taylor in the, her story, where Taylor took the center stage instead, just because she she was the more uh, dynamic character, character in in the events and stuff I wanted to write. Perfectly understandable. Sometimes we start off with an idea, and then realize that no, this other her idea is even better. Yep, that's exactly how it was. <laughs> All right. If you want to pick up, up his book, it'll be linked in the description below, as well as the artist who did the artwork of the cover. Be sure to check them out and give them some love. This book is scheduled to be released on January 8th, which coincidentally is when this video is coming out. So, if you have a chance, go and check it out. But that being said, if you liked what you saw and want more, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notifications when my next video airs. Leave a like, or maybe a comment, share this with friends, family, any other fairy friendos you might know, or any bookworms you might know, and I hope to see y'all next time. Johnny! Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Click the video on screen right now to check out another one of my videos. Until next time, Johnny!